Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopijana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopijana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopijana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Yasoda Nandana Brajjana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Brajjana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Brajjana Ranjana Yesoda Nandana Brijjana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Giradi Radha Giradi Radhe Jaya Radha Giradi Radha Giradi Radhe Jaya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Sri La Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Shil Prabhupada ke Chaham Vishpad Pramahamsa Prabhupada Chari Sotar Sata Shishi Madesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Shil Prabhupada ke Iskan BBT Founder Chari Jagat Guru Shil Prabhupada ke Granta Raj Shimad Bhagavatam ke Sama Veda Gaura Bhakta Vrinda ke Gaur Premanande Our glories to the symbol devotees our glories to the assembled devotees. Our glories to the assembled devotees. Our glories to Shishi Guru and Goranga. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om 
नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Shucks. We were getting we're getting to hear from Shrimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto, twenty-fifth chapter, text number fifty-two. Asuri Nama Paschadvas Kayayati Paranjana Gramakam Nama Vishayam. Dharmadhena samanvita Asari nam paschadvas Tayayati paranjana Gramakam nam vishayam Dharmadhena samanvita First time. I'm waiting on you. Your guru would be happy. I was trying to find a picture of this deity of Gadadhar Pandit. You know, we carry these things around. They don't leave our hand. When Lord Chaitanya was on the planet, they would often carry their deities around and a little bag in their neck. They would never be without the Lord. And it's, he's such a beautiful Lord. But my goodness, if I've erased him, I will feel cursed indeed. Such a beautiful little deity. But it doesn't look like my desire will be fulfilled. I wanted to show him to you. Such a beautiful darshan. Okay, Hare Krishna. Do you have your BTG still from this morning? May I?
Thank you. Persons who hear Srimad Bhagavatam regularly and are always taking the matter very seriously will have the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna manifested in their hearts within a very short time. Srimad Bhagavatam 284. In that mood, let's pray for some mercy. Om Gyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurn Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gunavena Maha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadandikam Vandeham Sri Guru Shita Patakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavam Sha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shiva Shakan Vitam Sha he Krishna Karana Sindho Dhinabandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namo Sute Tapta Kanchana Gaurange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vishabana Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Trubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Paditanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnabhe Bhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sarigor Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Asari of the name Asari Nama called Paschat on the western side, Dwa gate, Taya by which, Yati used to go, Pranjanaha King Pranjan, Gramakam of the name Gramaka, Nama called Vishayam the city of sense enjoyment, Drumadena by Durmada, Samanvitaha, accompanied, translation. On the western side was a gate named Asuri. Through that gate, King Puranjan used to go to the city of Gramaka, accompanied by his friend Durmada. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The gate on the western side of the city was known as Asuri because it was especially meant for the Asuras. For my friends and family who aren't familiar with Sanskrit, that means demons, sinful people. The word Asura refers to those who are interested in sense gratification, specifically in sex life, to which they are overly attracted. Thus Paranjan, the living entity, enjoys himself to his greatest satisfaction by means of the genitals. Consequently, he used to go to the place known as Gramaka. Material sense gratification is also called Gramya, and the place where sex life is indu indulged in, to a great extent, is called Gramaka. When going to Gramaka, Pranjan used to be accompanied by his friend Durmada. The word Vishaya refers to the four bodily necessities of life, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. The word Dharmadena may be analyzed in this way. Dhor means dushta, or sinful, and mudda means madness. Every living entity who is in contact with material nature is called mudda or mad. It is said, Peshchasi pailayena mati chaya hai maya grasta jivera hai se bhava udai. It's from uh, Prema Vivarta. When a person is haunted, he becomes practically insane. When one is in an insane condition, he speaks all kinds of nonsense. Thus, to be engaged in sense gratification, one has to accept a friend who is dormida or badly affected by the material disease. 
The words asuri nama pascha dvaha are significant in another sense. The sunrise is first visible from the eastern side, the Bay of Bengal, and thus gradually it progresses toward the west. It is practically experienced that people in the west are more addicted to sense gratification. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself is certified Paschimera Loka Shabha Muda Anachara Adi Lila 1089 Chaitanya Charitamrita. The more one goes to the western side, the more he will find disin- people disinterested in spiritual life. He will find them behaving against the Vedic standards. Because of this, people living in the west are more addicted to sense gratification. In this Bhagavatam, it is confirmed, Asari Nama Paschadva. In other words, the population on the western side is interested in an Asuric civilization, that is, a materialistic way of life. Lord Chaitanya consequently wanted this Krishna consciousness movement to be preached on the western side of the world so that people addicted to sense gratification might be benefited by his teachings. Srila Prabhupada ki, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki. So, the body is being compared to a city and the senses are being compared to gates. And I get the good old western gate. Now, I love Krishna consciousness and I love the teachings of Srila Prabhupada. If it weren't for these teachings, I hate to think what my life would have ended up uh, manifesting, where I'd be at this point in time. It would probably have been a much different life. I have no doubt about that. Certainly would have suffered much, much more than I have. But uh, it's funny because this particular gate, the genitals, it is in Western civilization, materialistic civilization. It is, it, for the male ego, it's everything. The man is so proud of his junk. It's like people have become obsessed with it because they're totally absorbed in the bodily concept of life and the greatest pleasure that Pranjan or the conditioned soul can have is sex life. And so, of course, they, you know, fixate on uh, the animalistic propensity of mating, sex life. Now, there's civilized sex life. There's licit sex life, illicit sex life animalistic sex life. There's different kinds of sex life. Some sex life can take you back home, back to Godhead. Some people think in their Tantra Yoga and their uniting of the male and female energies, they can produce some kind of nirvana, some kind of spiritual experience, and that is all in the mode of ignorance. They're simply fooling themselves or cheating others. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, a lifelong celibate, teacher of our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada said, if I could produce Krishna conscious children, then I would have a hundred children. Implying in his humility that he didn't feel he was up to the challenge of that service. It's not an easy task. Being a devotee, and even more so, helping others to become devotees. Not in the Kali Yuga, not in the Western culture, etc. We heard yesterday about the ears. Everything people are hearing, bombarded by, from all directions. It's about sex. Sex sells. It's the illusion. This is what life is meant for. To enjoy sex. I mean, that... that Decrepit old man, Hugh Hefner. He lived until he was, I think, in his 90s. Married to some, like, young lady in her mid-20s, maybe. You know, they say he had sex with probably about 4,000 women. Wilt Chamberlain wrote an autobiography where he said he had sex with 10,000 women. Now, if that's not chewing the chewed, 
What, does it get better? No. In fact, I remember as a kid being shocked. I have to be careful because this is Srimad Bhagavatam and it's meant for gentlemen and ladies and it's meant to be a cultured affair. It's meant to be transcendental, but at least cultured. But I remember seeing on TV this comedian when I was a kid, funny man. And he was bragging about some artificial way in which he could be able to perform sex. He had some mechanical device implanted in his body without getting into details. These days everybody just pops little blue pills or whatever. They're so fixated on it. But how can we blame them? It's the, it's the best they got going if they don't get to hear about Krishna consciousness. And that'd be one thing. I mean, let me state for my friends, my family, that in the plan of the Lord, he creates human society in different divisions. And according to your propensity of livelihood, uh, you have different standards set for you. And in this day and age, most people are classified as shudras, if not less. And for a shudra, the purificatory ritual, the religious passage of marriage is the one thing they're supposed to follow. If they can do that, get married and stay with one person their entire life, and the husband takes care of the, fam the wife, the children, what have you, he makes progress in life. He will be rewarded for that pious activity. But because of the demoniac influence of this age and because basically the people who influence society have very sinful proclivities. In fact, I'll just use the word demoniac. I have a friend who he retired early from the job he had had working in a grocery store for a couple of decades and he went for what is goal in life was, what his biggest dream was. I'd like to become an actor in Hollywood. And he actually made a decent living at it. You wouldn't know him, you never would have heard his name, but he was on TV shows, commercials, this and that, and still this day he gets, you know, the revenues coming in. So he got to pay his bills in that way and fulfill his heartfelt desire. Let me be an actor. He told me personally, he said, Hollywood is so so degraded, you do not want to even know about it. And it's not that they just like hide in their own dungeons, their own basements, their own palaces or mansions and carry on their nonsense. They want you and me to be degraded by what they consider to be life, their principles of life. And it comes through everything they push out whether it be the movies, the TV, the music, et cetera, et cetera. It's there. What goes in, it rests in the heart. And the heart's meant to be a, a pure receptacle, a throne for the Lord. Consciousness is supposed to be clean and spiritual. But when you fi fixate on the animalistic propensities of life, which are, which are available in the lowest of species. Certainly the animal species, the insect species, the bird species, the reptile species, the fish species. I mean, the pleasures that people are running after their entire life, it's there in any of the other species. That's not what human life is for. And because it doesn't, deliver the goods, it doesn't make anybody happy, then you have to try and mix it up. Okay, you know, in the teachings of Lord Rishabdev, in Srimad Bhagavatam, it says that uh, the famous verse, Nunam Pramata Kurate Vikarma, when a person considers sense gratification the aim of life, he certainly becomes mad. As we heard in the purport, his friend uh, Durma, uh, Durmada, Dushta, sinful, mudda, madness, as if haunted by ghosts. 
And there's plenty of that going on. Plenty of that. The subtle beings known as ghosts entering into your subtle body because of all the holes you punch in it with your intoxication and your sinful activities. You have no idea how you just open the doors and say, come on in and make me your puppet. I'll dance according to your little voices in my head. So when a person considers sense gratification the aim in life, he certainly becomes mad after materialistic living and engages in all kinds of sinful activity. These people who are demoniac, God is a great inconvenience. They want to deny him. In, in reality, they want to be him. They want to be the one who controls everything. They want to enjoy everything. They want to be everyone's best friend. And I'll qualify the last part. Meaning they want everyone to respect them, to like them, or, or fear them. Same concept. Whatever it may be, everybody should be focused on me. They want to be God, so they kick out God. They've done it in the educational system, certainly in this country, to the best of their ability. You know, the only reason why this nation has stayed around for a couple hundred years and has any hope of lasting any further is because probably at least half the people, they still believe in God. As Srila Prabhupada said, in God they trust. That piety has allowed the country to maintain whatever standard we have at this point. And those who are pious, I mean, I've traveled around the country in my work, yeah, they're regular, you know, Malecha, God-fearing people. They have bad habits because they don't know about the culture, the higher culture that Lord Chaitanya shared with the world. That Krishna intends or hopes that we would aspire for and practice. They don't know. So in ignorance, how can you, people are actually judged less harshly when they're in complete ignorance, not knowing they're doing wrong, than when those who know what is right and wrong and go ahead and do wrong. It makes sense. So even the legal system. Sometimes you can do something wrong, but if your intent wasn't to do it, you know, the motive, the intent has a lot to do with how harshly you'll be judged. So anyway, they try to mix it up. So it's not just man and woman. That's what Shastra is always talking about. What is it, uh, the other famous verse, that Pum Sastriyam Dhani Bhava May Tum, that the attraction between male and female is the basic principle of material existence. On the basis of this misconception, which ties the hearts of the male and female, one becomes attracted to his body, home, property, children, relatives, and wealth. In this way, one increases life's illusions and thinks in terms of I and my. What's so wrong with that? The problem is that attraction causes us to take another birth, another birth, another birth. Just like George Harrison had one, one line in the song, The Art of Dying. There comes a time when all of us return here. Uh, there comes a time when all of us return here. Something about... Uh, trying to, uh, to fill our desires to become, uh, yeah, forgive me, I muffed the line. I was a little hesitant seeing it or saying it, but it's really a cool line. Shama Sundar had it in his Chasing the Rhinos. He appreciated When we desire to become a perfect entity, because, uh, oh yeah, there comes a time when all of us return here. <laughs> desire to put, uh, Anyway, possessed with our desire to be a perfect entity. Anyway, the desires bind us to repeated birth and death. And that means in the 60 years I've seen the progression of Kali Yuga, it just getting worse and worse as the old timers say, it's, it's going to hell in that handbasket. There's like the cocked hat saying. Uh, and it's a fact, it's just getting worse and worse. and It's not going to get any better for some time. Not until people embrace this movement and teachings of Lord Chaitanya, which will take place. Hopefully we can see some of it manifest in our lifetime. I think we will. But they try to mix it up. And so male and female isn't good enough. Male and male, female, female, adult and child, 
human being an animal? I mean, if you think you're just a, a, a material body and there is no God, there is no limits or restrictions, life is what you make it, then anything goes. But people who are pious, people who are religious, they don't embrace that. They don't accept that. And they're willing to stand up and fight against it. Actually, it's coming to that. We don't want that. It's amazing what they teach our children in school under the principle of sexual education. They, you know, gender identification, you get to choose. You know, don't judge me by my gender, by my genitals. I'm free to be whoever I want to be and do whatever I want to do. Well, I know this isn't politically correct, and I know it wouldn't be popular with many a young, educated university student, what I'm saying. But I'm sorry. Krishna created the world. He created us. And he gave us a guide, uh, you know, a guidebook, text of wisdom, whereby if we concede to the reality that we're subordinate, we're always subordinate to something or someone, if we surrender to his instructions, then we'll be happy, prosperous, peaceful, and actually can end the cycle of repeated birth and death and all the miseries that come along with material bodies and material minds. See, in Krishna consciousness, or the way the Lord has, has created this world, there's nothing wrong with the relationships of man and woman, man and man, woman and woman, adult and child, human and animals. Affection is natural. And those relationships all exist with Krishna in the spiritual world and his eternal devotees. All those relationships. But what poisons them and what makes them the weight that causes us to drown in the ocean of material suffering is the lust which this verse and purport is dealing with. When lust enters into it, then it becomes exploitive. And even when it's pious, man and woman in marriage, still the principle of scratching my back is there. If you don't scratch my back, I'm going to get tired of scratching your back. Or with the children, parents and children, you know, the, 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 the parents so often vicariously live through the child. Because they have that youthful energy, the future is bright, they can mold them into anything and be better than I was and live through that child. And of course, as a young child in human form, we're so selfish to begin with, with our parents, you know, gimme, gimme, gimme. I mean, that's just the natural way, you know. But in Krishna consciousness, you soon mature out of that and learn, no, it's not just about give me, it's about sharing, it's about Krishna. Sacrifice. You know, everything should be offered for Krishna's pleasure. So affection is natural. In fact, it's encouraged because it brings out the finer sentiments of human life. We're supposed to be good friends in Krishna consciousness. That's the male-male program. Or in a, a more of a restricted way, the male-female relations. A respectful way, I could say. Careful way. Because lust is ever-present. It's not just like, you know, it's actually worse than COVID. It's a, that's a pandemic, lust. It's got everybody. It is the great enemy of the world, as Vijay quoted a couple of days back. It's captured strategic positions in, in, in the body and mind of all the conditioned souls of this world. In fact, this world is sometimes named Maitunya uh, Loka. Is, huh? Yeah, you're saying ocean, I'm saying world. Yeah, thank you. The world of sex. 
the bondage, the prison of sex. We sign up for it. We voluntarily, I like the, the, way, the reason why I used the word concede earlier is because Srila Prabhupada in one purport said, we voluntarily concede the sex life, the desire for sex, and thus we're forced to take birth again and again and suffer. No one's forcing us, but that's the influence and the association we have. By in influence or as, of one's association, one's qualities are developed. Pranjan just on his own doesn't do this stuff. He has to have a friend urging, come on, let's do it. Like, you know, Bhakta Alex would have never jumped off the cliff on his own into the ocean. Am I right? But when your buddies are doing it and they're saying, come on, it's fun. Then in their good association, why not? And I'm not putting down the swim in the ocean at all. Prabhupada appreciated Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates swam and played in the ocean. That's good exercise good stuff but the point was association influences us and the association of all those who are not believing in God and pursuing God and there are different levels of such religious or spiritually minded people we have to be careful if we're not in their company then we're in the company who they don't believe in God or they're avoiding God neglecting God and just acting in pursuance of the animalistic principles. They don't know what darkness and misery awaits them as they try harder and harder to enjoy this temporary pleasure. But if that's what you want, no problem. Krishna arranges. I think it's in the second canto. Maybe you can think about this where it's stated that the Lord, out of kindness to the condition, so put a little celestial nectar on the genitals of the male and female. In modern biology, we'd say there's many nerve endings or you know, nerves on the, uh, on the organs of the man and woman. And because of that little drop of nectar on there, that heavenly nectar, then there's some sense of pleasure in the activity of engaging in sex. If that wasn't there, there would be no reproduction going on. What to speak of all the you know, garbage of pornography and uh, exploitation of women, children, etc. It would just be seen as misery. In fact, this is one interesting reciprocation Srila Prabhupada had with the disciple. He was in the sannyas or ashram at the time. And he told him, Next time you have sex with a woman, note the expressions of her face. And hopefully some of you have never experienced that. Very fortunate if you don't have to go that route. Certainly in illicit sex, but even licit if you're able to maintain your vows as a celibate brahmachari. But Srila Prabhupada was making the point, you will see the expressions of pain. And it's a fact. But the conditioned soul embraces this activity as if that's what is pleasure. But when you compare that to the love that can exist between us and Krishna, or with Krishna's servants, fellow devotees, there is no comparison. A devotee gladly renounces the desire for selfish sexual activity so that they can grow healthily and progressively in their spiritual identity, realization of their spiritual identity and their spiritual relationship with the Lord. It's a very small price to pay. Krishna consciousness, if you aren't tasting it if you haven't opened up the bottle what was the example i used last time sweet and what was it jelly the jelly I, sweet and hot pepper jelly it's my second time to plug the preparation from trader joe's if you've never opened it and tasted it, i can't describe it to you you have no idea how nice it is so it's the same way with spiritual life 
the, the Lord, royalty in England, asked the devotee, can you make me a Brahmin, a spiritual, elevated, knowledgeable person? Easy. No, no problem. Just follow these four regulative principles. No illicit sex, no meat eating, no gambling, no intoxication. He immediately said, impossible. Because in the Western culture, that's what civilized, elevated gentlemen and ladies engage in. It's Kali Yuga, polished animal life. It's such a degraded, unfortunate situation we find ourselves in. But to go to the second half of the purport now, out of the Lord's kindness, what is it? Vande Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sahodito Godidye Pushpavanto Chitra Sando Tamo Lord Chaitanya and his immediate expansion, Lord Nityananda, have simultaneously arisen as if the sun and the moon over the horizon of West Bengal to dissipate the darkness of ignorance. So we think we're the center, you know, L.A., that's the center of the world, or New York, they're so proud of it. That's really, the, that's the center of the universe right there, New York City. But Srila Prabhupada said these cities in America, they're like a far distant, a remote <laughs> village on the other side of the world from Mayapur. He was saying that in relationship to Gainesville, wasn't it? With Gorni Tai. The Lord has so mer their lordships have so mercifully come to this remote corner of the world, this remote village. The Lord, where he appears, you can make a case. That's the center of the universe. So this Bay of Bengal, this is where the Lord appears. And everything west of it, the further west you go, the more sinful it gets. In the verse that Srila Prabhupada refers to in the purport, it's about Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. They went to western India. And even there people were more sinfully inclined. And Lord Chaitanya was so pleased with them for spreading Krishna consciousness in western India. And he's so pleased with those who go further west, further west, further. We're a complete opposite side of, India, of the planet uh, from India. And that's where Srila Prabhupada took up the mission of his spiritual master to come and share Lord Chaitanya's teachings. Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani, Pacharane, Nivishesha Shunyavadi, Paschatya Deshitarne. Paschat, from the verse Paschatya, the Western. And they asked, well, why didn't you make, because he pinned his own uh, pranam mantra, mantra for respect. They, and they, because we, his disciples weren't <laughs> mature enough or knowledgeable enough to uh, offer our own praise and standardize it when offering respects to the spiritual master. So he did, and he was one time asked, how come you put Western countries? You've spread Krishna consciousness throughout the entire world. And he said, well, that was the service my spiritual master gave me to come to the West. And it's only his mercy and the mercy of Lord Chaitanya that I've been able to do even more than he asked of me. And he passed it on the baton saying, I was able to do two, three times what my spiritual master asked me to do. I was really, really surprised when I saw Srila Prabhupada saying it like that. Yeah, I accomplished two, three times more than my spiritual master. He said, I expect you to, to, to do the same in reciprocation with me, ten times. Yeah, he really upped the, bar, upped, the, upped the bar. You should do ten or twenty times more than I've done. He had high hopes for his disciples and followers. It's an open mandate. Embrace this Krishna consciousness. Let me ask you, before Guru Puja, how many of you in your consciousness, in your prayers, renewed your vows of, Offering this life to Krishna. Did you pray? My dear Lord. Please accept this body. Please let me offer this life to you. You should be doing that every day. Every morning. This is Krishna consciousness. That's consciousness. It's not just going through the, the modes. Like 
judging from this morning, I don't think I'd see a single hand when, if I were to ask, how many of you were excited to get up and run to Mongarty? I'm just going to say this, and, and don't take it wrong, because I'm an idiot full of faults, and I'm just trying my best. But by Prabhupada's mercy, boy, I was eager to get up this morning. I woke up early. And sometimes it's like that. And those who are fixed in Krishna consciousness, consciousness, I give my life to you. I give my life to my spiritual master's instructions. Mold me. Make me who you want me to be. Use me. I don't want to hold back. Break down my barriers. Break down my, my stupid attachments. Please, begging like that. Those who are fixed in that mood of Krishna consciousness, then they're always eager to embrace the next service. Sleep. You know, Prabhupada said, I conquered over eating and sleeping. He did that early on in his, in his latter years of life before coming here. To the west and then in his latter days and he said and now i've no how do he say no there was no question for uh, uh you know mating and defending that was the easy one for him he was a sannyasi he's a pure devotee the pleasure of the body i'm not interested in the sources of misery and then in the last days that was what he said to giraj swami he said and now i've conquered over eating and sleeping in essence he gave him up in the last months of his life I guess that makes me liberated. So for those who are liberated in Krishna consciousness in the service of the Lord, the love they have and the love they taste, the love they experience, and the loving affection they have with all others, the spiritual master will be with his students. That's a parental like rasa. For us, with each other as friends. And etiquette is there for senior friends, younger friends, parents with children. It's all based on service to Krishna. It's important. If the affection's not developing, then something's wrong with your application or your reciprocation in the, reciproc in the relationship. It should become deeper and deeper. It should be real. It should be satisfying. Because if you don't find it here, you're going to leave. How many times have we seen people pack their bag and sneak off in the night. Sometimes shocking you, like, well, my God, they've been around forever. If you're not getting the friendship and the, and the love here in Krishna's association of devotees, then you're going to look for it outside. Because your mind is influenced by these past desires you've had, and if you watered those past desires with hearing or reading about the illusion, the, uh, you know, the scam that Maya pulls over, pulls on everybody. You can be happy in material consciousness outside of service to Krishna. And then, you know, the verse once again, quoting Vijay's class, you know, by contemplating the object of the senses, you'll develop attachment for them from attachment, lust, from lust, once you try it, then you get become angry, become dissatisfied. It burns like fire. It never is satisfied. Never, never. That's why people become progressively more degraded because they try harder, harder, harder. Heck, I didn't even say the stupidity of it. I gave all those different examples about trying to enjoy. I didn't even mention human and machine. That's, that's where they're going. They're so, like, trying so hard are entering into the illusion of, uh, you know, putting that thing on your head and, yeah, virtual reality. You know, Kali Yuga is a mess. And without the mercy of Lord Chaitanya's devotees, we're a mess. If not for them, what's that saying? But by the grace of God, there go you and I. So it's our, it's our duty to relish to be grateful to get for the gifts we've been given and to share them to the best of our ability. That will make us very dear to the Lord and his devotees, to the spiritual master. That 
is the formula for a very bright future. Are there any questions or comments? Which do you want to say first? That's material enjoyment right there. I got two drops out of it. I was lucky I got three. Oh my God. Do you want some water? <laughs> I got water. Oh, you got your own water. Oh, Krishna, very. Anyway, the thing about my, my Tunya Sagara, I had that wrong. It's my Tunya Agara, which are the shackles of sex that's life. That's what I was trying for. Oh, that's what you were trying for. I was actually, that's where my memory wanted to take me. Okay. My Tunya Agara, yeah. the shackles of and sex life. And I was life. thinking Loka, so it's Agara, but no, it's Agara. My Tunya Agara, it's in a purple here. Thank you. Here. Thank you then the other, I have a question for you, because I heard this some time, I think, and maybe you can confirm it or deny it. It gets more and more degraded as you go west, right? right. In other words, West, west Bengal, Lodgitan, this place yeah. is the highest, and then even Western India is more degraded. And, you go, and then you come to America and the west. But that's not the end of it. You keep going west, and you're going to hit China. China <laughs> you're gonna hit Asia. Is that is that do we? Uh, is there any? That is the proper understanding. Yeah, don't right. eat any dang thing. Yeah, that whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So I uh, thought they I don't think. in Chinese. They don't even have a word for God in their language. Yeah, I remember when when I was dealing, you know, because I have get questions from all the translators and everything, and they said there was this big debate and you know fight amongst the translators and how are we going to translate Krishna consciousness? You know, in other words, I, I forget what oh, the whole. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because, you what, know, what is the Sanskrit? He took it, Srila Prabhupada took it from Rupa Goswami's. What is it? How's it going? Oh, Krishna Bhakti was a Bhavatamati. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that's the phrase from that verse by Ramananda Roy. It's credit to him and in Pajavali. Yeah, so, that's, you, that's, so I, I was right about that. It's, uh, it's more and more degraded. So. You know, that's, uh, there's a whole pastime where Prabhupada said, okay, you know, when Tamal said, you might as well send me to China when he broke up the, <laughs> he broke up the Radhadamada. <laughs> and said, yes. I said, no, Prabhupada, I was just saying, it's impossible to preach that. <laughs> but he actually I went. Was, I was just joking, Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, well, I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, uh, to his tremendous credit, he actually surrendered to it and he opened up China. Just, yeah, with a little peer pressure. Yeah. Our Tamal Krishna Goswami has... Decided he's yes, going he to India to preach. He volunteered. I mean, China to preach. Yes, Ivana. It's it's it'd be China. It's border. We might say east, but no, we it's considered going around the globe. And you still until you hit the Bay of Bengal, and you're still going west. So China is the furthest west. Yes. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you for the class. Hare Krishna. Um, so um, when you said something that uh, it was Srila Prabhupada that said about if you see a woman's uh, uh, pain face, a pain mm. in her face because of uh, the sexual interaction. Mm. So. Um, what came to mind, it's like I have a lot of conversations with a lot of women mm. about this. And, and most of the time, you know, when you are married and, or in a relationship, if, if that part of the relationship is not there, or the woman doesn't want to engage in that with the husband or men, um, there is a fear that is going to leave the family. It's not going to stay. It's going to... He will. The yes, husband yes, and the father the will leave. Yes. Yeah. And... Um, you know, but it's, it's um, we have talked about the pain. So it was really impact me because it's like we are more focused on, I think, on the, um, the kids and the family and keeping, you know, that, those relationships. Yeah. So, yeah, it happens mostly because of fear of um, the husband leaving the family. It's, it's a pressure that actually uh, women put on themselves, even though it's something that we might not want. Yeah, it's exploitive. Yes. So yes. often. Because if you remove that from the relationship, um, mostly it will happen. The men will leave. Yeah, in this day, age, the prediction for Kali Yuga is that the marriage, the union between man and woman, is simply based on sexual attraction. And that doesn't go a lifetime. Pavamana, I saw him last night, and he quoted Dr. Laurel Hershey. Might be dating him, but I knew who she was. And uh, it wasn't that popular with the West Coast, 
because this is tends to be more demoniac than middle of the country and all that stuff. But uh, she would say, in entering into marriage, for heaven's sakes, marry someone within your own religion. And I can just say in terms of, you know, marriage I've had with Chatura, you know, it's gone the distance because we both are devotees. There are times when it was challenging. And I've told a little bit. One time we even got cursed in a wife specifically to have the, mar the, the marriage broken and separated. So we went through a rough patch a little bit at that point. But because of committed service to Krishna as the goal of the marriage, then, you know, that affection, it can't help but manifest best friends, best, best servants to each other, et cetera, et cetera. And that is, that's purifying in Krishna consciousness. It looks exactly like the non-devotees, but they have no chance whatsoever to go lifelong when it's just based on sexual attraction because it just doesn't go the distance. That's why they always have to change like I heard last night, you know how many wives Vasudev had? Vasudev had? Uh, my, it was 17. And it was all religious. He wasn't a Shudra. He was a Shatri and preliminary he was allowed. And he could support. And in the day and age in which he was in those relationships, he was able to keep happy the ladies. Sense gratification is a funny thing. It's always been there. But if you look at for photographs way back when in the West and what have you, they're all taken looking like this. Or even Bhakti Vinod or pictures of people in India, they're all like this. But nowadays, what does everybody want to look like in a selfie? This concept of happiness. But duty is the process and the path of becoming peaceful. And as the Bhagavad Gita says, how can you be happy if you're not peaceful? That's the foundation. So service to others. So this concept of sense gratification, it's been pushed so heavily in the last, you know, century and a half. It didn't used to be that way, and it's only getting worse. And this is the only thing keeping it at bay to the degree that it is Krishna consciousness. We have a big responsibility. Good luck. Srila Prabhupada ki.